You are welcome to today's lecture. Today I will be teaching on how to cut short pleated gown. And the measurement I will be needing, I will be needing the shoulder to shoulder measurement, the bust measurement, the waist measurement, hip measurement, gown length, sleeve length, sleeve circumference and shoulder to waist measurement. Oh. I had two years of fabrics here. Our gown, if you look at it, is divided into two parts, the upper part and the pleated part. So I'm going to start by cutting out the pleated part. And to cut out the pleated part, I will need the gown length and the shoulder to waist length. My gown length is 40 inches and the shoulder to waist length is 15 18 inches so to get the lower part i'll be i'll be deducting 18 inches from 40 inches and that will give me 22 inches so 22 inches plus one and a half same allowance i'll be having 23 and a half inches so i'm going to mark out my 23 and a half like this i'm using the whole length of the two yards for my pleats because the pleat is not that full so I'll be using the whole length of the two yards will be enough. The next thing I'll be cutting now is the upper part. And my measurement here, the first thing I'll be doing is to measure out the blouse length. I'll be cutting the back first. To cut out the back, I'm having 18 inches for the length of the shoulder to waist measurement. So, for the back, I will be deducting 2 inches because the back length is usually shorter than the front length. So, to make it fitted, I will be deducting 2 inches. So, instead of the 18 inches, I will be taking 16 inches plus 1 inch seam allowance. That is 17 inches. 1 inch for the half inch for the waist and half inch for the shoulder joining so I've taken my 17 inches like so the next thing now is to take the shoulder slope so the back of my the shoulder to shoulder of my client is 17 inches so 17 divided by 2 i have six i am having eight and a half so because the is a sleeveless top it's like a sleeveless uh, sleeveless top at the top the uh, the sleeve is just joined to hit on the shoulder side so I'll be deducting one from the head and half to make it sit very well on the shoulder. So instead of taking the eight and half, I'll be taking seven and half. Then at the seven and half, I will come down by half, three quarter of an inch. Then I will take my shoulder slope. I hope you can see what I'm drawing. After taking the shoulder slope, the next thing now is to impute my arm hole depth. The arm hole depth that I'll be using is will also be nine inches, eight and a half plus half inch for the same allowance. That is nine inches. So from the 9 inches, I will deduct 1. That is 8 inches. So for the ham hole depth, I'm going to be taking 8 inches. 
this is so because it's like a sleeveless top so this is my now my chest line so after drawing it down to the chest line i will find the middle of the hammer depth then i will draw my using my cuff ruler i will draw out the arm cuff so the next thing now is to draw out the neckline so for the neckline i will be taking three one quarter inches that is 3.25 inches for the length of the neckline and for the depth of the back neckline i'll be taking one inch so i'm going to use my hand to draw out the curve so next thing now is to impute my bus circumference the bus circumference i'm having here is 44 and a half inches to create ease i'll be adding extra one and a half inches making 46 inches so i'll be 46 divided by 4 will give me 11 and a half inches So I'll be taking 11 and a half, then one inch for the same allowance. I'm adding the one and a half to create a sort of ease at the bust because the style is like more or less like shirt at the top at the bust. So to create the ease, I need to add some ease allowance. Then on the waistline, I'll be adding, I'll be, I won't add anything on the waistline. I'm having 36 and a half year. So 36 and a half divided by 4. That would give me 9.125. So I'll be taking 9.125. Then my dart allowance which is one inch and my seam allowance which is also one inch making two inches and i will just use my cuff ruler to square it down So after that, the next thing is now for me to cut out the back. Before I cut out the back, I need to add my same allowance in. I forgot to mark it when, before I draw the line, so I'll be adding it. Then once I had this here, I'm going to deduct half the half inches from the waistline here. now the next thing is for me to cut the front to cut the front pattern i have laid the back on the folded cloth and i gave it like five and a half same allowance so I gave it like five and a half extension 
at the front an extension of five and a half then i lay it my cloth is already on fold then the two inches that i deducted from the back i have returned it i measure my two inches rule my line before i laid it so from the top here down here i'm having 19 inches that is the 18 inches plus one inch same allowance making 19 inches so now i will just first i will just cut out the front side I want the cloth to really overlap. That is why I'm extending the overlapping allowance. Now I've extended up to seven inches. So because I really want it to overlap each other at the front. So the next thing is first I will just cut out my sew without cutting the neckline so after cutting out my sew I will just mark my neckline the point from which my neckline starts from so after marking that I will rule out the overlapping extension. This is the center. I'm ruling out the center so that it will be more clearer for us to see. Then I can now put the back aside. So the first thing I want to adjust my arm or oh, actually I don't even really need to adjust. So after running out the overlap extension, the next thing is for me to take my neck depth and I will be taking seven inches for the neck depth. seven inches for the neck depth then using my curve ruler I will make sure the ruler is at the neckline point then at the, my seven inches and it's curving down so I will just take the line like so. 